Have you ever done that thing when you're carrying out an insulation resistance test and the reading comes up very, very low? So you scratch your head for a moment wondering why that's happened, then with a dawning sense of horror you realise that you've left a load connected somewhere and you've just pumped 500 volts through some sensitive electronics. Shocker. One of the increasingly likely culprits nowadays are these socket outlets with integrated USB chargers. These sockets are a brilliant idea as manufacturers of mobile devices increasingly opt out from giving you a charging block in a heroic bid to save the planet and definitely not a convenient cost cutting exercise. They allow you to have a fixed charging location for your device without any of the frantic scrambling about for the sole remaining charging block that hasn't been left at friends' houses by the kids and tense negotiations over who's got the least battery percentage versus those who are going out soonest. However, they can cause an issue as they have a small load permanently connected between line and neutral which can lead to the situation outlined in the introduction to the video which contains two inherent challenges. One is that it's difficult to confirm that you've got an acceptable result for your insulation resistance test and the other is that you could damage the equipment that's affecting your reading. Interestingly, this is one of the areas that was changed in the second amendment of the 18th edition of BS7671 but it kind of got swept aside a little bit in the furore over AFDD and hasn't really been fully explained. In the original version of the 18th edition, regulation 643.3.2 stated that where surge protective devices, SPDs or other equipment are likely to influence the verification test or be damaged, such equipment shall be disconnected before carrying out the insulation resistance test. Where it is not reasonably practicable to disconnect such equipment, e.g. fixed socket outlet incorporating SPD, the test voltage for the particular circuit may be reduced to 250 volts DC, but the insulation resistance shall have a value of at least 1 mega ohm. Now, while this doesn't specifically mention sockets with USB chargers, the principle could be considered to cover them. So you could have set the tester to 250 volts and carried it out, and as long as you were over 1 mega ohm, you were all good. However, this in all likelihood would be good for the tests between line or neutral to CPC, but when it comes to testing between line and neutral, a USB charging socket would give a reading of about 0.2 mega ohms. This was kind of got around for a while by various bodies in the electrical industry by allowing that this value was acceptable, as it was a known value on the circuit from the circuitry inside the socket outlets. There was a further bit of direction though in regulation 643.3.3, which simply stated that, where the circuit includes electronic devices which are likely to influence the results or be damaged, only a measurement between the live conductors connected together and the earthing arrangement shall be made. So that was all well and good. Under the previous regulation, if you had a USB charging socket on a ring final or radial circuit, all you had to do was connect the line and neutral together and test between them and the CPC, making sure of course that the CPC was connected to the earthing arrangement. It's interesting that even though these regulations provide acceptable methods for testing the insulation resistance of a circuit, it has this note attached to it as well. Additional precautions, such as disconnection, may be necessary to avoid damage to electronic devices. So it's interesting that there's some guidance there that you may need to disconnect some devices to carry out the test without damaging them. We're going to see in a minute how this became less of a note and more of a requirement. So this was acceptable. However, it did leave a bit of an issue which the diligent testers in the audience may have already spotted. At no point along the way have we carried out an insulation resistance test between line and neutral. This is required as the opening regulation of this group, regulation 643.3.1 states, the insulation resistance shall be measured between live conductors and live conductors and the protective conductor connected to the earthing arrangement. So as both line and neutral are classed as live conductors in the regulations, you would need to do an insulation resistance test between line and neutral. If we then glance at regulation 643.3.2 in the updated second amendment to the 18th edition, you can see the reference to SBDs has been removed. Some of the wording has made its way into regulation 643.3.3, which now reads, where connected equipment is likely to influence the measurement or result of the test or be damaged, the test shall be applied prior to the connection of such equipment in accordance with table 64. Following connection of the equipment, a test at 250 volts DC shall be applied between live conductors and the protective conductor connected to the earthing arrangement. The insulation resistance shall have a value of at least one mega ohm. Note, manufacturer's instructions may recommend some equipment to be disconnected during 250 volt DC insulation resistance tests as it may influence the results of the test. So according to this, we now actually need to do two tests for insulation resistance. This is expanded on a bit in guidance note 3, inspection and testing published by the IET in section 2.6.7 under the subheading, 
circuits with equipment that might influence the results of or be damaged during an insulation resistance test. It reads, some electronic equipment may be susceptible to damage by insulation resistance tests, for example, where electronic components that are not intended to withstand voltages of 500 volts DC. Other equipment may influence the measurement being made. So that's describing the exact problem we're currently looking at. It then goes on to give examples of what could cause this. For example, equipment may have A, electronic components or transformers connected between line and neutral, which present a relatively low resistance. And that's the exact situation we're facing here. It then goes on to confirm what the regs say. Regulation 643.3.3 of BS7671 requires that circuits with this type of equipment have an insulation resistance test in two stages. One, when the circuit cables are first installed, an insulation resistance test is carried out between line conductors and between line conductors and the protective conductor with the protective conductor connected to the earthing arrangement. Now I'm pretty sure that that should read live conductors rather than line conductors, but we'll throw that one back to the IET and see what they say. Individual sections of a circuit may be joined via temporary connectors in place of vulnerable equipment to test multiple cable segments together in this way. So we're directed to test between line and neutral, line and CPC, and neutral and CPC without the devices causing the low reading connected. When doing this test, it's critical that the CPC under test is connected to the installation earthing arrangement. Again, more on that in future content. It's also really important that the wiring system is completely connected throughout with temporary connections wherever you've removed a socket. So at this point, we prove that the insulation on the conductors is doing its job, especially for line and neutral. Then the next stage is, Two, following connection of equipment that might be damaged by or influence the test, a test at 250 volts DC is to be applied between live conductors and the protective conductor connected to the earthing arrangement. The insulation resistance shall have a value of at least one megaohm. So that's all pretty clear. We need to test the cabling at 500 volts DC to make sure the insulation on the conductors is doing its job. Again, just to re-emphasize the point that the conductors must be connected together where we've left the USB charging sockets off. Then we install the socket outlets and test again at a lower value of 250 volts DC, but this time just between neutral and CPC and line and CPC, circumventing the false readings we'd get from testing between line and neutral. This is an acceptable solution and you're still likely to find most issues with insulation not doing its job by using this method. As a bonus, these sockets from BG Electrical that we've used to demonstrate these points have the additional virtue of being able to take a 500 volt insulation resistance test across line or neutral to CPC without giving any kind of false reading or causing damage to the USB circuitry. You could even theoretically test across line and neutral with this socket either on 250 volts or 500 volts and you won't cause any damage to it. There's no reason to, as the regs no longer require you to, and you'll get a misleadingly low reading. But again, due to the change in regs, you're not left scratching your head trying to figure out if that's from a fault or from an installed socket outlet with the USB charging point built in. For more information on wiring accessories and the wiring regulations, check out our free training package to help you with your CPD. You'll find the link in the description, or check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching.